desperate pleas from a domestic violence victim calling 911 for help. That call came just seconds before a young woman was shot and killed by her ex-boyfriend. Well, that woman's grandmother was also shot, but somehow she survived. WREG's April Thompson has the chilling call and the message the family says she left behind. Hopes it sends. This is 911 emergency. You need police, fire, and ambulance. 1030 the night of May 5th, the call came from this house on Masterson Cove. Traquincia Armstrong called police, begging for help. Um, to come now. Do you know who's breaking in? Yes, just the husband is doing it. What's his name? Justin Devon Hudson. She was calling as her ex-boyfriend, Justin Hudson, was breaking into her house. Are they going in the back or the front? Where are they exactly? In the back. In the back. I'm through the back of the house. They should have been here 30 minutes ago. Where they at? Police wouldn't get there in time. He just shot my grandma. He just shot my grandma. He just did what to your grandma? Ma'am? She is. She got a gun. She got a gun. She got a gun. Okay. okay, what did he do to your grandma? She couldn't answer. She was gone. Justin Hudson shot three people that night. Jaquincia Armstrong, his ex-girlfriend who called 911, died. Her grandmother was shot in the hand. And then Hudson turned the gun on himself, killing himself. Rashonda Johnson is Armstrong's mother. I don't know if that came around and told me what had happened. In regards with everything. The grandmother, the only survivor, described the harrowing ordeal to Johnson. He broke in the back door of the house. And she said she looked up, he had a gun raised. And the first shot, she said she went to block Shay. And it hit her hand and she fell on the bed. She said he told her how to kill your grandmama. Now it's your turn. Johnson says she didn't know much about Hudson before her daughter started dating him. But his being 10 years older than Jaquincia worried her. She saw the violence for herself one day when Jaquincia came home from work. He hit her in her face that morning and she be on the door. I didn't even know he was out there or anything. I called the police. I had the police come out to the house and everything. That's when the warrant and the uh, order protection went into, went into order. That restraining order was filed last December, but in April of this year, Jaquincia called 911 to report Hudson pulled her into his car and drove off. She says she was able to jump out of the moving vehicle. Listen to what happens when Jaquincia explained to the dispatcher she filed an order of protection against Hudson. Okay, you all got all this going on between one another, but you all still being around each other? What's the point of having the, the paperwork on Because I just told you I almost lost my life last night, ma'am. That's the point of having paperwork. Okay, but you're having access to him. You are going around him, allowing him to do this to you. I've already talked about this with somebody else. I just want to support it so right now. Yeah, it was just like the police fail, you know. You guys failed her, you know. Because she's, she, she's called, she, we've put reports out. Justin Hudson had two warrants out for his arrest before he killed himself. They were for violating orders of protection. But WREG found his troubled history goes back to 2015, related to a break-in spree at some Whitehaven apartments. One woman said she woke up to find Hudson licking her inappropriately as she slept. Another woman woke up to find him taking off his pants. Both women say they fought back and he took off. He was also convicted of sexual battery and aggravated assault, serving three years behind bars. After his release, he ended up back in jail for not registering as a sex offender. This man has a background. Why, why is he on the streets, you know? Y'all ain't looking for him that hard, because if he can bother my child, that means he ain't hard to find at all. Shelby County District Attorney Amy Wyrick says truth in sentencing will keep more violent criminals behind bars.
And she says orders of protection, though not a 100 percent guarantee of protection, are still important to have. If there is a violation of that protective order that doesn't result in this horrible tragedy, then that's a prosecutable offense. Let's definitely get the restraining order. And then when that prosecution process starts, participate in it, be a part of it, and help us seek justice for you and for the community. But for loved ones left in grief who filed orders of protection and called 911 for help. They should have been here. 30 minutes ago, where they at? Ma'am, we don't have a call at your location. Did you call 30 minutes ago? I did. I called about an hour ago. And then nobody came. The system seems flawed. How do the law protect you and you reporting it and you doing everything you're supposed to do? At what point one my protect, my protect it? April Thompson, WREG News Channel 3. Very disturbing. Rashonda Johnson hopes her daughter's story will reach other abuse victims and encourage them to find a way out. The Family Safety Center here in Memphis is available to help victims protect themselves and their families.